Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we are back to working on the Jimmy Duresta bandsaw project and I need to concentrate on getting this bottom wheel finished up and uh, we may try to get a few other pieces on there depending on how time goes today. So um, just like the top wheel, uh, I need to get the rubber tire uh, installed and glued in place. We also need to get our pinstriping done. I've got a shaft collar that I ordered to go on the back side of this uh, wheel to keep it from sliding out. Right now there's nothing to keep it from sliding out of the bearing, so we need to get that installed. Um, and like I said, maybe we can even get the table on here. We'll see how that how time goes. So let's uh, jump in here and get started. So first things first, I want to get the uh, shaft collar installed. This is just a piece that's going to go up on the shaft. The shaft is all the way in. This is where the bottom bandsaw wheel is, and this is just to keep it from coming out. So this is, you got basically it captured between the bearings so the wheel will run true. It's loose enough that it'll turn. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tighten this set screw up on the shaft. That should leave a little mark there. It did, and um, I'm gonna take a drill and I'm gonna put a little hole in there, just a little indention, and that'll give that um, set screw a little place to go to where it won't spin on the shaft. So let me go get a center punch. All right, I can kind of center that up. That should give me a place for the uh, drill bit to kind of get started on. Don't need much, just a little dimple. That should be plenty. And now we can tighten that up and don't have to worry about this uh, collar spinning on that shaft. It'll seat down in that little indention and I think we're good to go there. All right, let's see if we can get this uh, tire installed. Um, we're gonna do it kind of the same way we did the last one with the clamps. I did have some guys comment about uh, doing this instead of, uh, I'm gonna turn that this way I think so that's not sticking out as far. Um, instead of clamping these tires like this, I had some people comment it's better to use a strap and, and just kind of pull this thing on. And on a smaller wheel with a thinner tire, I agree. The problem with this is, is this tire is so thick, I can't hardly get enough stretch on this thing to pull it around and do it using that method. So I'm just gonna use the, the, the way that, that I know is gonna work and that's gonna be to clamp them on. So uh, we'll get about across from that and we'll clamp the other side. All right, we're just gonna see if we can stretch these on here, kind of like we did the other ones. This is a really a two-man job for wheels this size, but like normal, it's just me out here, so. All right, it's got half of it on. We got it all the way on now. I think I got out of the camera frame and putting the bottom part on, but it's on. 
All right. Just gonna go around and kind of roughly centered up. We'll get it good and centered up whenever we do, whenever we glue it on. So now we need to evenly stretch this uh, tire. And like before, I'm gonna put a little wooden dowel up underneath this. This is an inch and a quarter in diameter. And we're just gonna go around and stretch it. I can see where I'm starting at a seam here. And I like to make two full laps around this. This just causes the rubber to kind of equalize in tension. Uh, the way we stretch it on there, it may be tighter in one area than it is in another. Um, this, like I said, just kind of evens that out. I'm gonna make two full revolutions around uh, just like this. And then we'll make a third revolution as we're gluing the tire in place. So we will get a total of three uh, times around with the pressure and that's halfway. I'll bring you guys back here in a minute. So now we're ready to glue these in place. And again, I'm using this high speed cement from Woodworkers Tool Works, which is where we source the, uh, the tires for this bandsaw. If you need bandsaw tires, I highly recommend you give those guys a call. Uh, Woodworkers Tool Works, they got a website and they have tires for most bandsaws out there. You can check out their website or give them a call. This is basically just rubber cement. Uh, we're gonna come in here and with that dowel kind of picking the wheel up, we will go above, put it on both sides and then we'll just kind of move the, the stick down and we'll go completely around this thing and get it all glued together. I got an, another can of this back here behind me because uh, this other one is a leftover can from the first one. It's not a full can. It's probably not gonna be enough to go all the way around. With the rubber cement, you wanna make sure you are cementing both sides. So you're not just putting it on one side. The other thing I wanna do is make sure I'm centering this uh, tire up as I go around. In fact, let me get a ruler to check that with. The tires are two inches wide while the uh, wheel itself is three inches wide, but that was what we can get. Uh, I would have loved to have gotten some three inch right wide tires, but they are unavailable. Uh, nobody makes them that size. And um, Bobby at Woodworkers Tool Works said I could get some made but he said that they're so far behind right now at the place that makes these things, it'd probably take a year for them to get them. And uh, so we're just going with a two inch wide tire and it'll be fine because probably not gonna be running a three inch wide blade anyway. And even if you are, it'll still run on that tire. The purpose of the uh, rubber uh, tires is, is that you're blade is not digging into the rim of whatever you're cutting on. It just kind of gives a little bit of a cushion there. And it also gives you a surface that's easier to crown. Um, and we're gonna, we'll do that at a later date, but you want the top of this wheel to kind of be at a, come to, to a point. You don't want to be flat. Uh, if you crown it, that, that bandsaw blade will want to ride right on the top of the crown, the highest point. And it just helps with the bandsaw blades tracking. Uh, so we will be crowning these uh, tires before we're through with this project. We're not quite ready to do that yet. All right, I'm gonna take my time, work myself around uh, the tire here, get this thing all glued together, and we will bring you back once we do. So I've got my bugler pinstriping tool again. We showed this in the video where we did this on the last one and makes for real easy pinstriping. We're gonna start by putting this little ring around the outside here like we did before.
There we go. And then next I want to do the uh, stripes on the actual uh, spokes here. And just come down these and do these. All right, my gold is done. I did a red stripe around the outside wheel. I'm gonna go clean this thing up, put red in here, put a different tip on there, and we'll get that one done as well. All right, we also put a red stripe around the perimeter of this wheel. And we're gonna roll that around as well. This has got a wider roller in it. And because uh, of the regularities in the wood surface, I kind of have to roll it around a little bit to get it, get a good stripe going, but had to do the same thing on the other side. Let's see. So it takes a lot longer to go around because there's just a lot more length in the total wheel but out here on the diameter as compared to in there in the hub. And we're just about back to where we started. Here we go. I've got the table here. This is upside down right now. Before we flip it over and mount it though, there is one piece that needs to go on here. This is a uh, kind of a trunnion that fits down in a mating piece over there that allows this table to tilt. So uh, we need to get this bolted back down in place. I had already gotten it cleaned up and ready to go back on the machine. So uh, it's just bolts in place. I will note that I couldn't find the original bolts that came out of this. So we're having to put new ones back in. It's gonna be up under the saw where they're not gonna be visible. I'll paint them black. But uh, normally these probably would have been square head um, square headed uh, bolts. In fact, let me see. I may have a square headed bolt that'll fit there. Let me look. Okay, plan B. I do have some square headed um, bolts here that are the right length. These uh, should fit in here just fine. These probably aren't exactly like the ones that would have come out of here, but they're pretty darn close and they'll look more appropriate than the uh, hex head bolts that I had. Plus they're not the shiny ones, uh, which I'll still paint these, but still, I think this will just look a little bit better. Let's get these uh, tightened up. See if we get this table flipped over, we can pick it up and put her back on the machine. Well, I discovered a problem. When we flipped this thing over, I realized that we never cleaned up this side of the table. This is uh, pretty much the condition the whole saw was in when we started, uh, rusty crusty. 
And uh, I know it's been a while back, I had a, st a student that was working for me and he wire wheeled the bottom of it and got it all painted up. But I remember now that we never actually got it flipped over where he could clean the other side. I just got it flipped over for the first time since he's done all that. So um, yeah, I don't really wanna do this in the shop. It's just gonna make too big of a mess. So uh, we're gonna lower this back down on a pallet take it outside, get it back up on the sawhorses outside, and I'm gonna attack this thing with a wire wheel and get it cleaned up. Again, not some of the fun, glorious part of machine restorations, but necessary nonetheless. We will uh, get it done and get that table cleaned up and hopefully it'll look good once we do. All right, I'll be back. Well, it's a dirty job, but someone has to do it. And that someone is me. About ready to put the table back on. Before I do, I wanna grease up this uh, bottom trunnion. This is on the bandsaw itself. And we put the mating piece on the bottom of the table. This is where it's gonna be able to kinda rotate. And we wanna make sure we have some lubrication in there. So I'm just uh, taking some good quality uh, grease here and just putting a nice thin layer and I'm gonna do this on both sides. Got the table hanging here over everything and I'm hoping that we're gonna be able to just kinda of slide this in place. Drop that down there in that trunnion. It should kind of seat itself as it goes down. And it did. Now you can see the table easily tilts and goes from uh, flat to at an angle. Um, there's a set screw on the other side. You can lock it down. And I think there's also, yeah, there's a bolt here in the back that goes up. This is a stop so that when it goes back down, it's level. I'll need to set all that up. But you can see the table is in place. And it's tilting beautifully. Thought I'd give you a look at the surface on this after we cleaned it up. I wire wheeled it. I actually sanded it a little bit with 180 grit sandpaper. I then um, came in and just used some Johnson paste wax and put a really thick coat all over this thing and then kind of buffed it out a little bit. You can see some of the buffing marks in there which will work their way out over time. They're just, uh, in the wax right now, but uh, looks good, I think. I'm very happy with how that turned out. Got a little touch up I need to do on the sides of this where we got the wire wheel up on the paint, uh, but no big deal there. But uh, this is pretty much uh, in place. Well, she's really starting to look like a bandsaw now. We got the table back on it, got the bottom wheel all uh, pimped out down here with the pinstriping, got it permanently on there with the the shaft collar in the back. Uh, yeah, we're making good progress now. Um, I still need, there's an auxiliary table that goes back here in the back. It doesn't tilt, it just stays in place. 
I've got that outside. It needs to be cleaned up. It has not been had all the, the rust and old paint and everything else off of taken off of it yet. I need to work on that, get it painted. There's also a cast iron bracket that goes on the back back here that the motor will mount to. And again, need to get that cleaned up, painted on the machine. Um, once that's done, I think we can start working toward seeing we get a motor on this thing uh, and moving forward with it. We are making good progress. It's coming along nicely. And wow, it's big. So with that, guys, that is going to be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. They really help see the algorithms over on YouTube, help my channel get discovered by other people. Uh, big, huge thank you, as always, to the supporters of the site who support through Patreon and PayPal, etc. That is uh, extremely important for me. It really enables me to be able to take the time to film this stuff and put it out there for you guys to see. Uh, with that, we're going to sign off. As always, again, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video.